Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool and tonight I'm coming to you live to give you guys a tour of my pretend grocery store. And I'm gonna give you a ton of ways on how to embed a ton of literacy and math um, activities into their play. And then at the end, I'm gonna give you a peek at all of my food and nutrition centers. Because um, I've been seeing in lots of groups that everybody's kind of panicking right now because everybody's doing food and nutrition next and nobody has um, any ideas. They're kind of panicking. So I thought I would come in tonight really quick and help you guys out with that. So we're going to do this theme for two weeks. And I, um, if you haven't watched me before, I have a preschool in my home. I taught in the school district for 11 years. So that's why I can come to you live on a Sunday night. So what I'm gonna do is real quick flip the camera around and I'm gonna go ahead and get started and show you guys. So this is my, okay. So yeah, so this is my grocery store. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk and I'm just gonna kinda go around. So, so on the back wall, what you can see is I have my grocery store um bunting banner and then I just cut out um boxes oh darn it it is backwards <laughs> um I just cut out boxes um from food carton so I could have some environmental print on the walls just to have add some more literacy to everything um and then oh and all of this dramatic play all the principles are in my teachers pay teacher store you don't need to grab it if you don't want to but um if you want to you can so at the cash register, it's probably the biggest um, time for math, right? Because you have your checkout, and then I, I'm gonna come back here, like I'm pretending to be the cash register person or the cashier. Um, so my cashiers, I have um, this number line right here, and I, that way they can write numbers because they write receipts. This is just a roll of tape, and they just I suck some scissors in the middle, and they just cut a receipt and they write the number on it and it's sitting right here next to the cash register. Um, and they just write a receipt at the end and that's a great way, really quick, easy way to add numbers and then add some scissor skills in too. And I mean, tons of math when they're using the cash register and, and model for them counting out like, oh, it's $3 rather than saying some like gigantic, like gigantic amount, like, oh, it's just $3 or it's $4. So they can actually count out the three and $4. And then I have um, some markers over here for them to write receipts. And then I got some, of, if you ask the grocery store, they might donate um, stickers to you. Mine did, so that was really nice. So, and then over here, I'm gonna kinda go backwards again. So at the front, I have my produce stand. Here, we have the produce section. And I just have little signs on the front that are um, of the different fruits and veggies, and that way the words are on there to add some more literacy. And then these are boxes. Are I bought some Melissa and Doug cars, and that's what they came in. So I just I'm keeping them for that. Um, and then this is just like pipe cleaners, guys. Like it's nothing fancy. It's just pipe cleaners, like kind of like bended and put together. And the one one year the kiddos helped me make all of these. So we have like green beans, and then these are peas, just kind of in little balls, and we have peppers and corn, and then I added tweezers for a fine motor, and then potatoes, just a little ball, and then lettuce is just cut up paper. And then what they can do is I added a scale so they can put the items in and weigh them, and then they can put them in one of these bags. So to add some um, more math, I added in a scale. And it's just my skill for my discovery center. And then for the fruit, I just used like mostly pom-poms. And then one year one of my kiddos had the idea to put a, a pipe cleaner around a pom-pom for the pears. And then we just have bananas and things. So that's the produce section. And then over here, I have like the pantry-ish items. So we have boxes. And then on the bottom we have cans. And then I have like jars and bottles. And one fun way thing I do in my dramatic play is I put paint inside. Just to add some color, like this is, I just put brown paint in that one, and then yellow paint in that one, and this one has purple paint in it, just to make it a little more colorful. And if you are just building your dramatic play um, area and your props, 
Grocery store is a great one because you can ask all the parents to send in items and then you can keep some of the really good ones because they're going to wash out lots of containers for you that, that you may not eat or that you may not have. So um, keep, at the end of grocery store, keep some of them so you can use them all year long for other things. And now I'm going to actually not have this out tomorrow because tomorrow is our first day, but um, I'll put it out the second week. So this is an inventory list. So you know how when the cashier doesn't have anybody checking out, they're just kind of standing there. Um, so they can walk around with this clipboard and they can go around and they can count how many things. My my little boys were um, playing with it the other night. So um, they, they were um, taking inventory for me. <laughs> and then you can also do sale tags and just, they can just write on here with a dry erase marker adding in more le literacy and more math. They can either write the number or they can write what it is, what like what is on sale or they can draw a picture. And then I have price tags, so that's adding in some more math. And then I think, oh yeah, I have blank ones too. So that way they can write the numbers too. So that way um, your cashier's not just kind of standing there the whole time being bored. Um, and you can have the clerk do that. It's up to you. Kind of depends on what, what, how many rolls you want and um, all of that. Um, and then I use, because I'm um, trying not to use plastic bags, it's just not really safe for kiddos. I used to uh, like five years ago and then realized how <laughs> unsafe that was. Um, so I just have some reusable bags and then I have some paper bags and then I have my, I'm gonna, I know I'm turning it sideways just some aprons and I got those at Target when you're in the dollar spot and then at the checkout too we were having all the candy from math and I was like oh, why not put some of these wrappers at the checkout so they're just empty wrappers we ate the candy <laughs> um, and they can sort them by color and by name so you have candy now at your checkout stand and then on this side, I have all the frozen section, or the refrigerator section. So that's, so as they're putting things away and getting things out, they're sorting. So they're either putting it in the refrigerator section or, oh, in the freezer section. And um, my kids will bring in more stuff. This is just kind of what I started with. I've been collecting stuff for a couple weeks at my own house <laughs> um, to fill our grocery store. And then if you want to have cheese bags that somebody washes, I just put some shredded paper in there. Um, this is just a Melissa and Doug prop. You can use, put real props in there too if you don't want to use just the containers. But when you use the real containers, like, like look at all that print on there. Like it says cream, cheese spread, whipped, like all that great um, language and literacy coming in at you. Okay, so there's that. And then at the top, I have some grocery store ads. My pack does come with some super, super simple ones. You can also, have, there's blank ones. You can have the kids make them if you have time. Or you can just laminate some ones, some um, real grocery store ads to add in some more math and literacy. And then I always have my shoppers. Brianna says, do you have a letter to send home to parents? And in my grocery store pack, there is a letter to send home to parents, and it tells tells them how important play is and what they're learning and it has um at the bottom it says for them to bring in things for you so it's in that pack um and then I, I just have blank shopping lists on these little clipboards here's one that my little guy did the other night and then oh over here oh and I have baskets just from the Dollar Tree nothing fancy and then I won't have this out tomorrow either I'll put this away for them leave it out for the second week but it's just a daily specials board so another way to add in literacy um, and fine motor. So, um, like my my little guy's in kindergarten, so he wrote grapes. Um, your your friends made me sound spelling, or they can they can put scribbles on there, like whatever they're doing at their level. Like be excited and be like, oh my gosh, look! If even if it's a scribbly hot mess, be like, oh my gosh, look, the pretzels are on sale. I need to get some pretzels and really get excited about their writing and celebrate it. And then I don't know about you, but every time they buy like all the things and your, their grocery carts are full, they don't want to put anything back. So what I did was I just got this little hamper from the dollar store, and after they're done shopping, they put everything back. They put the stuff in here. And then um, the either the cashier or the clerk has to put it away. And they just learn naturally that if they buy the whole grocery store, there's nothing in the store to buy for next time, or their friends can't buy anything, or maybe they're the friend who 
doesn't have anything to buy at the store. So just they'll just learn just through natural play that um, they really should you know buy five carts full. <laughs> Otherwise, they're going to be putting it away. And as they're putting it away, they're sorting it by fruits and veggies, which is colors, and then they're sorting by like types of things. Um, how long do I have this set up? We're gonna ask. I'm gonna do this one about two weeks. When I did full day, I did it up to four weeks. But I'm just doing it for two weeks. Oh, and then I have my little cart parking at the back. And that's just a Target cart I got on sale at the end before Christmas. I'm gonna back up so you guys can see the whole thing at once. Right. Um, so how do I introduce this when they arrive tomorrow? So tomorrow when my kiddos come to school, Instead of reading a book at Circle, what I'm going to do is I will have all the kiddos sit in front of, I was pointing like you could see, you guys are looking at me, I'll have them sit in front of the pretend center and I will, um, that morning before we do it, I'll ask my one of my pre-K kiddos who's really good at pretend, um, I'll ask them, oh, can you guys be in a show with me? And what, what I'll do is, since they're already good at pretend, me and that other friend or two, um, will act out um, the um, pretending. So we'll we'll be like, oh, who do you want to be? Oh, I want to be the cashier. Oh, you want to be the shopper? Oh, okay. And we'll get our roll necklaces on, and then we'll get our props like the apron for the cashier. And if the um, the shopper needs a cart and a wallet, and then we just model all the language and how to pretend um, that way. That way. When they go to pretend they're not like lost, not like, ah, what do I do? <laughs> like there's so many things, like I don't know what to do. Um, I've actually been doing, I call them shows, um, for probably like mm, seven years now, eight, seven, eight years, almost the whole time I was teaching, I've been doing shows. Um, and my kids love them. They are like so engaged. They're like on the, on like, they're sitting on their knees and they're like jumping out. Like they just want to go play so, so bad. Like it just gets them like super, super excited. And you will see their level of play like spike. Even if, like, let's say you have Pumpkin Patch right now, you can still do a show midway through your theme. You don't have to do it just the first day. You can even, um, it's a great way to assess too. Like, let's say you have, like, you need to get an assessment in. Like, say, okay, I'm going to watch a show and have the class take turns watching each other do the, do the pretend play. It's super, super fun. So, yeah. So, I, I keep my dramatic play, um, Marcy for um, two weeks, but in, when I taught full day, I did it for a month, so it's kind of whatever you want to do. Um, it says, is this good for twos? And I think it is. You'll just have to, like, dial it down so they probably won't be sorting as much. Um, they, they can still have the, all of the environmental printout and things like that. They just probably won't be sorting everything on the shelf, um, and I wouldn't have anything super little out, like the pom-poms and stuff, because um, they're still eating so many things, so... So you can totally still do it. So I'm going to flip the camera around. And I'm going to show you guys what else I have out for next week. So in my food centers pack, I have these cards. And this is my block center. These are my STEM challenge cards I'm using this week. Build under, over, around, and next to to get um, some of those positional words in. And then I just have a whole bunch of cereal boxes, guys. Like... Nothing fancy, just cereal boxes. And what I've done is every year I collect the cereal boxes and I just like break them down. Like you can tell, like I just taped the ends of these together. And then when the theme's over, I just untape all of them and then I save them for next year. And then I also, um, my little guys love these little snack cups. So I have a whole bunch of those and some cereal cups. So any kind of like cups, oops, or you can do cans. And then I also put one on this peg so that if they if they need it right next to them as they're building, they can. And then I just have some Melissa and Doug cards so that way, um, and these I got from Target this week in the um, dollar spot. Um, so that way they can build around over and next to you. So that's my, my block center for my grocery store theme. Um, I don't do a science theme when I do grocery store because it's full of shapes. So I actually do, I'm going to do my shapes, um, shapes theme all month, kind of like sprinkle it in as we go all month. So this is just how my science table, it was, my science table is now math. So these are, all of this is in my, um, my, my shapes pack in my store. So I don't do science, um, when I do my grocery store. Oh, I was, I don't have everything put away yet. Um, these are some clip cards, and I, 
um, have, I'm going to try this this week. Putting the game on a tray to maybe make it more inviting to see if they'll come play with it a little bit more on their own. So they just put the shape and match it. And then I just have some fruit counters. And then these are just some path games. Like this one's a breakfast path game and a lunch one. And there's a dinner one in there too. And then I also have these um, puzzles, environmental print puzzles. Let me dump one out for you if I can. So you're going to get a whole bunch of containers from the grocery store. So all you do is you cut them up and make them into puzzles. And then I, I try and keep a, a box next to it. That way um, they can see what it looks like. Or you, let me see if I can get this one out with one hand. I'm going to sum it up. Or you can cut them up into strips. Like this is a pancake one. And they can, obviously that's not in order, but they can put the puzzle in order to make um, the box. So you can do it two ways. You can make puzzles like, like normal puzzle boxes, and then you can make the number, number lines, or you can put letters on the bottom, whatever you want. But it's great because they're, re they're having, they're exposing, they're reading letters, they're reading the print, they're reading the pictures, and they're doing math and all of that um, problem solving, putting those pu puzzles together, working on that spatial sense. In the sensory table, I have these veggie counters, and I just got these off Amazon. They're kind of expensive, but I use them all the time. They're great for farm theme, um, grocery store, um, food, nutrition, whatever. You can use them for a ton, a ton of things. And then I just have a whole bunch of different plastic jars, different sizes. And then I have measuring scoops and tweezers. I always have tweezers. <laughs> Um, and then I have some tubes, so they can kind of use them like a funnel, and they, like, you, this is usually what they do, is they'll use them kind of like a funnel to get the items in, and the things, but beans are too big to use for funnels, so I like to put tubes in, because they kind of go through really nice. And then over here, so I have my bookshelf, I'm going to show you guys, this is a free printable on my blog, and I'll show you guys that in a minute, but, um... I had my little guys help me with it this weekend. <laughs> so I had some pictures for my blog. Um, so it's just, I like to eat, and the printable is on in one of the links on the. Um, so yeah, they just write their name at the top, and it's just a paper bag. And I, you can use ads, or you can, if you're full day, or if your kiddos bring their lunch, you can, um, you can save the packaging and use the real packaging. But it's up to you, whatever you guys want. So it's a really fun book. Um, for your library center. So that's on the blog. And we're going to make that this week. And then this is my writing center. So I have all of my word and nutrition cards. And then I have the themed paper. And then I have more of them down here. And then I have shopping list back there. And then um, I just have ads. And I just, um, I, I make them so they're single, so they're not all folded because it's hard for them to cut when there's so many. So I just make them so they're a single page. Just be careful when you're using these ads to cut all the alcohol and inappropriate things off. So yeah, and then I put a So yeah, so they just um, they'll make their own shopping list with the ads and then they can throw their trash right there. Okay. And then we're gonna do Goldilocks and the Three Bears and I tie that in because she eats porridge. So I, um, I tie, that's how I tie Goldilocks and the Three Bears into the nutrition theme. And Goldilocks and the Three Bears, I just, it's such a great story. And the, these um, retailing cards are in my food and nutrition pack, too. And so here we are again with the trays. So I'm trying this this week, guys. I'll let you know how it goes. And these trays are just from Target. I know Lakeshore has some that are the same um, size, too. So I just have some cereal. And we will talk about how we don't eat the cereal <laughs> for the games because it's stale. And they'll just pick a card. And then we'll cover up that letter with the cereal. And then I have, this one has lowercase with the uppercase card, so that way I have two different levels and they can play this game as a team or by themselves. So this is what I have set up for table time. We're just, I just have clipboards out so they can either draw or write how big each item is. And they're just gonna measure with cubes. So this is how my table time is set up. That's my camera stand I had earlier. So my trays are from, they were from the um, Target dollar spot. I have these trays, these are from, these are like tiny ones, besides my hand. 
Um, these are from, I'm going to try crazy a little bit. These are from Discount School Supply. Those are from Target, from Back to School. Um, but Lakeshore has some too that are about the same price actually, if you figure it out. And then I have these two. And those are um, Discount School Supply as well. And everything is on Amazon too. Um, so here's my Play-Doh tray. So these little food utensils are from the um, dollar store. So is the sorting tray. And then I just put in some buckets of Play-Doh. And they'll probably, it'll probably get mixed up during the week. And that's okay. It doesn't, it, it drives me a little crazy on the inside. But I don't say anything to them. Because um, I know it's good for them to explore and use their fine motor muscles. Um, and then I just have the veggie counter so they can make casseroles. Sorry, let me back it up. They can make casseroles or they can pretend to make dinner in the bowls and, or they can just like press um, using the tools and then you know I'm sure everybody does this one you can make the, the healthy plates you know like hopefully they're not full of <laughs> pies um, so yeah and um, someone asked um, how are you doing transitions from each activity so my center time they they get to pick whatever they want and they just go play there. So there's really no transition. Um, I What I will do is I will link. Sorry, I'm shaking for some reason today. Um, I will link in my blog or in this post um, how I do centers. Um, and my kids use clips and they pick where they want to go. And they pick the activities they want to do. So, Oh, and then this is what fell. Huh. So... This was hanging up on my easel, kind of like this on both of them. So I try and give them some exciting things at the easel so they're not just painting blobs. Um, so I just hang up this vegetable chart, just, you know, from one of the teacher catalogs or a teacher store like years ago. You can tell it looks a little old. <laughs> um, and then that way they have their, they have something to paint. So you can tell up here, Last week we had fall things out and I had fall stencils. So you can see my kids actually tried to draw pumpkins um, because I had pumpkins around the painting easel. So um, somebody asked what age group are these activities for? So I have a multi-age preschool class. So three, four, and five year olds. And then a lot of my activities also too can be made harder if um because I know a lot of kinder teachers use it too. So here's my um I like to eat activity. I have it all prepped, I have everybody's name at the top, and we so that'll be good to go for Monday. And then we're also um doing the syllable game, so they clap the syllables of the game of the <laughs> of the word, and we'll we'll do this for small group, like us, bear, uh, guess. And then they'll put it in the four syllable bag. So just a fun way just by adding little bags to make a syllable game more fun and then we're also going to do um some printing with fruit like um with blueberries and blackberries and oranges and those are bananas believe it or not they're super fun to print with oh and one more thing and then that's all i got for you so um in the morning when they come in they do two table time activities um so this one they will do second that's why it's not all all out and pretty so they don't go get it um how do you encourage them to use charts or words labeled? I don't know what you mean. Can you tell me more about that question? Does your art procedure chart um, include taking off the art smock? It doesn't. In my art easel routine, I don't know if you can see it. You can see my visual routine over there. It's kind of like right there. That is a freebie in my TBT store um, if you want to grab it. But I don't think it has take, it does not have taking off your art smock. Um, so these are just read, build, write cards and I have them in these dry erase packets and so what I'll do is I'll put these cards all in the middle of the table set it up for you guys so I'll have all these in the middle of the table and then I'll have magnet letters also in the middle of the table and so they'll get um like they'll say oh like they'll pick a letter L and they'll say L and then they'll find an L and they'll put it in their cart and then they get to write an L with the dry erase marker obviously you know you'd they have the cap off but yeah so that's what we're gonna do for our other table time and this game also includes lowercase letters 
and it includes sight words. So if you're a kinder teacher or if you want to teach a couple sight words in your pre-K, those are in there too. So they would build, the, they would put the sight word card here and then they would build the sight word in their grocery cart and then write it at the bottom. So that is all I got for you guys tonight. Thanks so much for joining me. In my post, I linked my food and nutrition centers and activities. You check out that post. That's where the um, I like to eat um, class book freebie is. And then there's also a link to my grocery store um, post, so you can check that out in more detail. Um, make sure you pop in the Pocket of Preschool Facebook group and join that as well. And you guys have a fun and fabulous Sunday night. Don't work too hard. Enjoy your families. And I will talk to you soon.